So unlike a radiologist, I have to actually stand up to do my job and do things like walk. Um, I can't just sit here in a chair and dictate and look at a computer screen all day and do the medical equivalent of playing Call of Duty. Trying to get an early start on the day. It's about six in the morning right now. So before work starts, I'm gonna try to get a little workout in just to get a little bit of a sweat so I can get some blood flowing before we get started on the day. I'm basically the rock. Got the heater going. Do I want to be doing this right now? No. Do I kind of have to? Yes. Do I want to quit every second? Yes. That's all, I just wanted to say that. All right, managed to finish the workout in our little shed right there. You can see it's snowing pretty good. Gonna go inside and freshen up and get the day started. Also, if you think working out in the morning sucks, feel free to comment. I think it's like the worst thing ever. All right, real quick, I'm kind of a masochist, so I like to log in through my computer at home to see what's waiting for me at work. So let's check it out. Okay, not bad. So you can see there's three right there. And I've got a new appointment here. I recheck there. And it looks like there's a consultation for me there. So pretty standard day. Uh, got a few morning transfers. So let's get freshened up and get to it. Much better. All right, time to construct food for the day. All right, so real quick rundown of the food. It's about two tablespoons of peanut butter right there with some oats I sprinkle in. Banana, breakfast, breakfast. I've actually got a pretty bomb lunch for today. I made my wife a ribeye last night, so I've got leftover broccolini with ribeye and a big sweet potato. That's going to be delicious. Shout out Frank Prisanzano on Instagram, greatest chef ever. Far the most important thing I'll eat or drink today. Oh yeah. And I forgot I had to do this before work. Crap. All right, so while I wait on my car to thaw from its icy grave, basically I'm on call for the weekend. And so what that means is that any neurological emergency I'll be consulting on uh, today that comes in through like the emergency room. Um, our hospital has a 24 seven emergency service and they are insanely busy. Um, possibly the busiest I've ever seen in my entire career. It's truly insane anyway. But what'll happen is I'll see those appointments that I showed earlier. Those are already, those are cases that have been transferred to me already or scheduled to be transferred. And so it looks like one dog had back pain, one dog had seizures and uh, another dog was having trouble walking, the gist of it. So I'll take a look at those dogs when I get in, and then I will see a couple of appointments. I've got a recheck post-op, a recheck epileptic, and I'm seeing a, I believe a puppy with some sort of vertigo type issue, which is a little strange. So I'll be taking a look at that. So I'll get the transfers, my new patients, we'll get some scans going, MRI, and see what comes through the door today. All right, just finished about a 20, my usual 20 to 25 minute drive to work. I feel like every 
doctor on YouTube lives in Manhattan. Is that true? Because everybody takes the subway and everybody's got a clip of them using the little subway card that they always swipe. So I don't have that in this video. I just drove to work. I hope that's okay. You know, blue collar vet life. Let's go take a look at the patients. That's me. got to work it's my office so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of chill and sit in this chair and then read stuff and just give people opinion oh wait I'm not a radiologist all right so I just finished looking at my transfers my inpatients um, thus far we have one workup which is an MRI on a dog with it's a boxer with spinal pain we suspect so the owners want to pursue an MRI just to rule out a neurologic issue. So that's what we're going to do first. And let's see what the images show us. All right, so now I have to have a difficult conversation with an owner to go over their dog's MRI findings because the dog's pretty young and he's got a spinal tumor. Like so i've got to go over that it's never fun but um i'm gonna talk about their options mainly trying to do surgery or consider radiation therapy um, or just palliative care it's kind of the big three options but um we'll see what they want to do all right just finished that conversation um went pretty well as far as i could tell the owner's obviously very upset but she's considering um her options at this point I think she probably is leaning towards surgery, but she has to talk it over with her family a little bit uh, before they commit to doing something like that. Um, I offered surgery because I think surgery would actually potentially help this dog and also get a diagnosis for the tumor, kind of serves two purposes that way. Um, but we'll see what she wants to do. And um, I'm gonna head down to the ER and see if there's anything neurologic waiting on me. So I kind of like working on Saturdays because there's literally no one in this giant hospital. This hospital employs, I would guess about 30 to 40 doctors and there's like 10 of us here. So I have this entire office to myself. So I'm okay with that. All right, so ER just asked me to come to a consult on a dog who is also having vertigo uh, or what looks like it. So let's go check it out. So you can see this dog is exhibiting pretty clear evidence of a left-sided head tilt. And see when she tries to walk, she's always tilting her head to the left and staggering to the left. So this is pretty classic for a vestibular dysfunction. So here you see some nystagmus as well. That's also very consistent with vestibular dysfunction. If you want to learn more about vestibular dysfunction, feel free to click the link at the top to my prior video on the whole topic. All right, so just finished my last consult for the day. Um, let's check the whiteboard and see if there's any new patients coming in. No. 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 Not me. Not me. This might be me. 
Four people walking in front of me. Let's see what this is like. So we just did a quick consult on a dog with pretty severe neck pain. Uh, not sure what the owners are gonna wanna do. If and I also just took a look at a dog with back pain again who has some trouble walking. So that one is going to be an MRI. And so let's see what that one uh, will end up showing. All right, so real quick, this is what our friend with a disc herniation looked like. So this is an MRI. We are in a cross section of a dog. So take a dog picture of this guy looking straight at you and we're slicing him like a loaf of bread with the images. So this is his spinal cord. I'll zoom in a little bit. This is his spinal cord right there. And the white ring around that is the spinal fluid and the fat that sits in the canal. And then this arch here and surrounding here, this is the vertebrae, okay? So watch how his spinal cord goes from having that white ring around it to now there's this dark stuff on the side. You see how it's kind of pushing the spinal cord that way? See all this black stuff right here? All this black stuff, it's lifting the spinal cord that way. So that's very compressive disc. See all that? That's compressive disc material. So we gotta get that out. All right, so just finished up surgery on a dog who was basically paraplegic or paralyzed in his pelvic limbs. Um, had a massive disc herniation, but surgery went fine. Um, got a lot of disc material out. It was really nice how I was able to see the spinal cord decompress during surgery. So hopefully that dog um, is able to walk again. Usually it takes about mm, two to eight weeks, somewhere in there, uh, before they're able to start showing improvement and get back on the feet again. Um, but he's pretty severely affected, so my hope is that he is on the positive side of that. But we definitely did him a service by decompressing his spinal cord. So I'm happy his owners brought him in uh, right away. We were able to do that. Um, diagnosed a, another dog with a spinal tumor. Did consults on dogs with a vertigo, like you saw. Um, did a consultation on a dog with neck pain that you saw. Um, and then I did a consultation on an epileptic. Three rechecks for epilepsy, um, checking their blood work, make sure that they're tolerating medications okay. It's about 5.30 now, and I am gonna go home and see my family. All right, so it's basically a Christmas miracle that I'm leaving at about 5.30. Just got all my work done, didn't really have much more waiting on me today, so I'm gonna head home and see the wife and baby. All right. See you guys later. Where my day started, the shed.